Hello, hello. Today is day 17 of the 21 days for a self-judgment detox. And I literally at this moment, I was like, should I primp a little? And I'm like, nah. <laughs> so this is, this is what Sunday looks like, um, which was hilarious. So um, I, I got a request on, I'm hard on myself for my relationship woes. <clears throat> it's a way to put it. Um, if it's a relationship that's going south, gone south, uh, challenges in your relationship. I just saw this thing. I had not, I don't even know who the guy is. He's a YouTuber, Steven Crowder. And they showed the video of his gaslighting his wife and the treatment of his wife. And she's eight months pregnant at the time. And it's, um, it's definitely hard to watch. And I, I mean, I've lived it. Uh, <clears throat> I've lived it in my own way. Um, at times and to see that abuse play out and here's how I would say I see it I see both sides of the equation I see the side where he's what I would call a flaming narcissist and she is got you know I don't know what the term of it is but she's the host that's the word they use and she's the host for him and she came to be the host because of upbringing. I'm absolutely sure I know nothing about her uh, other than she came from a, a pretty devout Christian family. And I know in certain segments of that, that can be a product of that, that you're con you talk about judgment being rained down on you. Um, <clears throat> and I also said, I, I've watched near death experiences and I was watching a guy yesterday who talked about, um, you know, there, like, like he crossed over, there is no hell, which I've come to believe for a very long time. And there is no real evil. We just drift so far from ourselves that we commit in this human form evil acts or we behave, you know, through traumatic events. So in that instance with Steve Crowder and his wife Hillary, what I see is her trauma response to what's going on and got instilled, installed and instilled somewhere and then his uh, narcissism. So he's the narcissism, she's the host and... Um, you know, eight months pregnant, and uh, it was, it's, uh, to watch that, it's, uh, so whatever your relationship woes are, whatever they are, <clears throat> um, I'm, I'm going to make this pretty general, so just tap and see what comes up for you, karate chop. Even though I judge myself for the state of my relationship, or even lack thereof, I choose to honor my truth right now. Even though I'm not living the fairy tale, <laughs> I'm not living the fairy tale at all. What if that's a bill of goods? We've all been sold. That really doesn't work in a human body. I choose to honor my feelings now even though this life can be so hard, relationships can be such work and so challenging. I choose to honor, I feel this way now. Go to the eyebrow. I judge myself for my relationship woes. Whatever those are, what is wrong in me that I've attracted this? And there it is. That's the sneaky way the bully in my brain gets to me. Tells me I've attracted this. I've caused this. If I'm dealing with abuse, somehow that's my fault. And I've created and caused it. What if I could see this differently? What if all of this is surfacing? 
to help me get in touch with the wounded places in me and to find more compassion and kindness for these wounded parts of me. What if I'm meant to see this so I can learn how to practice giving to this part of me what it never got? Kindness and compassion in the face of this other person. What if this person criticizes me, puts me down, is challenging to deal with? And what if I keep blaming myself for that, but it takes two to tango? And what if I have my part and they have their part? And what if I got wired so long ago to try and fix this, to try and fix them, to edit my behavior constantly to be a better person. And what if that's gotten me trapped at times? What if all of this is happening to help me find my, my personal empowerment? What if I'm meant to see these wounds? not to make myself wrong for them, not to judge myself for them, but to find a way to practice forgiveness. Because I was a victim as a child. When all of this got installed in me, I couldn't run away. And what if, as I listen to this wounded child in me, speaking through me, through this relationship, what if it awakens me to see how I learned to be so hard on myself and then slowly start to practice loving kindness and compassion. And what if it could be possible this relationship is the vehicle that spirit is using to draw me back in to a deeper, closer relationship with spirit. What if it's forcing me to nurture that part of me? And what if amazing things can come from this? As I learn to reconnect with God, spirit, in a whole new way, 
And what if that changes everything? And take a breath. Um, I know in my own life, the challenging relationships that I deal with, they really do force me. And, and I can think of so many of them that have forced me to really look at myself. And what I used to do is really judge the hell out of myself. Not that I still don't do that. Not that I still don't get caught up in that. But it's really forced me to see the wounding and to learn and practice to be more loving, kind, and compassionate with that part of myself. Um, and it's a journey. It is such a journey. And it's like, you know, one step forward, two steps back, three steps forward, two steps back. And it just... That to me, the key always goes back to that catching ourselves in the act of the judgment. And you're not going to catch it most of the time. You're just not. But when you do catch it and you interrupt it, that's a profound moment. Just even note like, wow, there I am judging myself. That's an interruption alone. And that can be enough. And the more you catch that, the more you awaken to we learn to treat ourselves the way we were treated. So, of course, we learn to choose relationships that were measured for us. When my husband and I hooked up together, my husband now, because I was married before, I, I had this, like, fairy tale idea. And it's, it's really kind of insane because I, that's not what I grew up around at all. I grew up around two, two parents that were highly dysfunctional, fighting with each other. And I'll never forget what my husband said to me one day. He's like, Mark. You act like we're supposed to know how to do this well. Think about what we both came from. And I was like, wow, yeah. But that's the bill of good that the fairy tale sells us. It's like, oh, you know, the prince and the princess and the white knight and everything is beautiful. And instead of like, it's hard. Anyone I know that's been in anything for any length of time, it's like, it's got its challenges. And to know that and, and to go into it and think of your background and what you were raised in and go, that's my model. That is my model. And how can I seek to transform that for myself? And that is what I've seen, particularly in my relationship now with my husband, is so much that I've learned about myself and the transformation that continues to happen and will continue to happen and I just see 23 years together now, it's like the, the, the gap to resolve stuff is so much quicker than it ever was before. And the willingness on both sides is so much better. It's like in this way, wow, it makes me emotional to say this, we are rewriting history in our families on both sides. We are rewriting history from both sides. And and the hopes that that changes stuff that our kids moving forward rewrite it in their own way as well. So I hope you found that helpful and we'll see you back here tomorrow for day 18. Bye for now.